right here is a Solatron LM1420.2. It's a it's a digital voltmeter. Apparently, it's it's not as digital as some might say. It's pretty. It's got a lot of discrete components, but it has Nixie tubes, and it is absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, the way it's displayed as well, the the cards are sticking out the top. All of its insides and intestines are just dangling out and just uh, you know sitting there just to show people what Nixie tubes are about. I was setting this up today and I did a TikTok video. I know TikTok, yeah, it is what it is. But I was actually quite surprised about the response of it. It turns out that pretty much most average people don't have a bleeding clue what a Nixie tube is. A lot of the comments on that video were basically just about what they looked like in games. They said, oh, that looks like something out of, I don't know, Call of Duty or something, which is quite funny. Instead of Call of Duty having Nixie tubes in them, uh, they liken it to the display screens in Nixie tubes, which is fair enough. I mean, it's a generational thing. And to be honest, uh, even myself in my generation, if I wasn't so addicted to uh, electronic history and looking on YouTube, I probably wouldn't have a clue. I'd look at them and I wouldn't know what the names are, at least, and stuff like that. This is a Nixie tube. It's got loads of bits of metal inside shaped like numbers one after the other. You can sort of make them out. And when you send electricity through this, look how the different lights uh, turn on and like where they are in the tube. It's amazing, isn't it? But it just was quite interesting to have it set out like this because obviously a lot of people don't know. So I figured why not have it sticking out and doing its thing. But this is not what the video is about. When I was setting this up today, I also set up this uh, Griffin timer with uh, Decatrons inside of it. I'm currently trying to think of what to plug into it. I don't know whether to plug in what, like a button to push every time somebody wants to push and, you know, it's like a hand-driven uh, Google counter or maybe a maybe a Geiger counter or something like that. I don't know. I don't know. And then below it is something else that I put together today uh, based on IN11, IN13 bar graph Nixies. That's down there. And it's not currently working at the minute. I'm not sure what I've done wrong. The documentation is a little bit spurious, but it's still a good project to make and the links for this project is below. You have to source the bar graph uh, Nixie tubes yourself. But yeah, I mean, that's another thing that I'm going to do. And I'm going to wire this one up to a contact mic on the floor. So when people stamp their feet or literally just walk around, it will bounce up and down. I think it'll be kind of fun, you know. Anyway, currently I have the voltmeter wired up to solar panels, which means if somebody shines their phone light onto the solar panels, they have a somewhat can adjust the uh, voltage going in and just, you know, at least see a few movements. I mean, this might change in the future, but it's just a little idea right now. But this isn't what I wanted to do the video about. No, no, actually, it's about something a little bit more mundane. It's about a light bulb that I just found that I completely forgot that I had. I'll show you it right now. It's this bulb right here that is on top of a rather dodgy looking wooden box. I got the wooden box and bulb combo at car boot sale quite a while ago. In fact, there was even a spare bulb as well. Uh, as you can see. Uh, these are apparently from a cinema in Kent. I think it might have been Sittingbourne or something like that. These were spare bulbs from the old projector in the cinema. And it's really quite nice. Obviously, there are bigger bulbs. There's brighter bulbs, infinitely brighter bulbs. But this is the brightest bulb I have. And it is pretty damn bright. Currently, it's only got about 20 volts going into it. That's because I sort of wanted to show the filaments glowing a little bit in the display cabinet and they will last for quite a while. But, you know, you're not going to blind everybody. But I just thought I should shine it up. I was turning this up and the, well, lo and behold, the solar panels over connected to the voltmeter just kind of went a bit crazy. So let's just, let's just give it a go. I'm just going to turn it up right now and see what it does. Like, I love how thick the filaments are. This uh, video mainly is asking, uh, does anybody know uh, what the actual bulb socket for these things are? It's quite a big, I think it's got about a six centimeter diameter. It's quite a big bulb. And obviously right now it's quite sketchy because that is live and you could get electrocuted on it. I mean, this will be behind a screen anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But it would be nice to have, you know, a screw in bulb uh, socket for it because right now it's rather ropey. Anyway, I'll just turn it up a little bit and we can see how bright this really gets. It's so cool. It's really cool. But the other thing is it automatically talks to the voltmeter via the uh, solar panels, which is great. It's great news. Like, turn it up and you just send up all the voltages. Oh, yeah, here we go. Oh, I'm only sending this up to 200 volts. I don't want to pop it. So it talks to the Nixie tube, which has got an awful frame rate. Nah, 
For this section, I'm getting it up and running. It's only a little bit. It's going to have Nixie tubes. There's going to be some magic eyes, some VFDs doing some certain things. But this is just sort of placeholders before I get a, get a project done. I have a surplus of big uh, seven segment VFD tubes and I'm trying to figure out a good project to do with them. So if anybody has a suggestion of what to do with about 200 of these, I'm thinking possibly a pixel screen or something like that. And that may be quite cool. Also, if you hadn't seen the video on the Look Mum No Computer channel, from uh, a week ago I got a large amount of test equipment from a garage in Stevenage and this uh, Type 585 it's a Tektronix oscilloscope it's huge uh, it was in it and it's working beautifully uh, another project that I need to do is take this apart and uh, basically get it to a thing that I can just leave it running without worrying about it then I'm going to take the sides off and have it as a display thing that's functioning with obviously with its uh, insides exposed because it is literally it's humongous like um, this is my hand. Uh, you can see it's quite a big, quite a big oscilloscope. So that'll look pretty good as a sort of functioning uh, machine that is going to probably show the output of the thousand oscillator mega drone. And it's got hundreds, maybe not hundreds. That's an overstatement. It's got about 30, uh, 40 valves in it. So it looks really good when it's got its uh, case off and stuff like that. Apologies on the next step on the rhythm generator drum machine. That is good. That is nearly done. I've got the sequencer done now, but I got a little sidetracked with the project in front of us right now, which has just gone up yesterday, the video on the Look Mum No Computer channel. It is an electromagnetic sequencer, roughly based on the Radiophonics Crystal Palace, and it sounds absolutely awesome. I'm still trying to figure out a way of integrating this into the museum as a functioning thing. I'm, I'm still not sure yet, and uh, it needs a better a bit of adjusting and fine tuning this is literally something that I plonked together in about 36 hours to try an idea out so it could definitely be better like the actual motor could be a lot closer in a shielded case and stuff like that but I'm going to be doing a an answering question sort of video on this uh, in the next couple of days so keep an eye out on that and needless and needless to say there's extra footage and stuff of this over on my Patreon and stuff which supports this kind of stuff and the museum opening because as you can see I'm, I'm getting it built and stuff and it's going to be open within the next couple of months uh, COVID pending which is actually looking like it's you know it's looking like it's opening finally anyway speak soon have a good one